This is the walkthrough video for the PDT2, the probability drum trigger. We'll talk about how to create beats, how to integrate it into other drum machines, how to work it into your song. So let's start. The PDT2 has uh, no sounds. It doesn't have any samples in and of itself. It's not a drum machine. It's a trigger for other drum machines. So I use it mostly with the redrum and the Kong. Now, theoretically, you can trigger any device in Reason, but I use it mostly with those two devices. Now the PDT2 has two drum triggering sequencers. So channel number one and channel number two. This means it can control two different sounds. Channel 1 can be a bass, and channel 2 can be snare, or channel 1 can be a closed hi-hat, and 2 can be an open hi-hat, or a high tom and a low tom, or really whatever you want. But they're independent from each other. So uh, let's see how you actually hook it up into a redrum. I've got a redrum here, and let's turn the rack around. Channel 1 has two CV outs, and channel 2 has two CV outs. Gate and level. We'll talk about level in just a second, but gate is where we want to start. If we want to control our bass drum, which is on one, and our snare drum, which is on two, we can have channel one gate out go to channel one uh, bass gate in. And we can have channel two go to two gate in. So now if we pull up the probabilities for our bass and our snare, we here we've got a little beat here. Now, if you looked at the intro video, you know that when probability is 100%, it triggers every time it gets to the step. When our probability is 0%, it never triggers at that step. But if it's somewhere in between, then it triggers sometimes. In this case, if probability is 55%, it'll trigger 55% of the time, randomly. So let's have that at 100. And we've got this very basic beat. Because we have all 100s, this is a very consistent, regular beat. So let's add some probabilities. Let's add some ghost notes, some grace notes to this snare here. So we've got just a couple. These are low probabilities, about 20%, 25%. So they're not going to play very often, but they'll play sometimes. Let's add some probabilities to our, I'm sorry, some uh, ghost notes to our bass as well, our bass drum. So we'll do just a few pickups, a few ghost notes to our bass. And actually, let's shuffle this a bit, because I think we'll make this groove a little bit. It's an okay, but it's a little thin, a little uh, mechanistic. We have snares doing our grace notes for snares, and our bass is doing ghost notes for our basses, but a bass can do a ghost note for a snare, and a snare can do a ghost note for a bass. So let's go ahead and add those. These are bass ghost notes for our snare, and these are bass ghost notes for our snare, and now let's add snare ghost notes for that bass and snare ghost notes for our bass there. Let's see how this sounds. Now I'm hearing a little too many of those ghost notes, so let's pull those back just a little bit. sounding okay. Let's add a second PDT2 and let's have this control our hi-hats. We've got closed hi-hats on 8 and open hi-hats on 9. So let's turn this around. We'll set gate into 8 and gate into 9. And let's do a little backbeat thing for this closed hi-hat. And let's add just some ghost notes to the close hi-hat. Uh, we need our shuffle. And 
And now for our open hi-hat, I'm just going to add ghost notes to our backbeat. I'm going to make at the end of the measure a little more common to hear an open hi-hat. And that's sounding okay. Sort of a groovy little beat. That's all just based on random probabilities. So there's one thing I'm noticing in that our hi-hats, we have probabilities on both the closed hi-hat and the open hi-hat for the same step. And what that means is that theoretically, our closed hi-hat and our open hi-hat can play at the same time, which we probably don't want because that can't physically happen in the real world. So we've got a button here, linear. And linear drumming just means playing one, one surface at a time, one beat at, or one note at a time. So when linear is selected, these two will never play at the same time. What happens is if it turns out that randomly the PDD2 says that this should be played and this should be played, it won't play them at the same time. It'll play, uh, in fact, whichever one has a higher probability. So in this case, 1's probability is 19, 2's probability is 22, so in this case, the open hi-hat will play if it turns out that both of these are, have de been determined to trigger. So now, just if we have the linear, we'll never hear them at the same time. Now, theoretically, a bass drum and a snare can absolutely be uh, heard at the same time. That's, there's no physical problem with that. I happen to not like that, so I'm going to turn on the linear for our bass and snare as well. And we've got a little beat here that's sounding okay. Now there's one glaring problem to my ear. If we solo the snare, we can hear that the core notes of the beat, you know, the two and the four, are the same volume as the ghost notes. But that, that sounds too mechanistic, that's too artificial. What we want is our ghost notes to be much softer than our core notes. So how can we do that? Well, if we look at the back, we've got these level CV outs. And what level is, is when one of these is triggered, the PDD2 sends the level of the probability out of the level CV. So what that means is that, for instance, if this is triggered, the gate is just triggered on and off. but 22% goes out of the level CV, whereas if this is triggered, 100% goes out of the level CV. Well, why is that useful? Well, if we can map our probability to volume, we can get the volume here at 100%, but the volume here at 20%, and the volume here at 22%. So we can sort of uh, make the core notes louder and the ghost notes softer, and it, it should sound better. So let's unsolo that. Now how do we do that? The redrum doesn't have a level in for CVs. But that's okay because we're in a combinator. And the combinator has extra CV ins just for programming. So we'll select the programmer and we'll turn this around and there are our CV ins. So let's close this redrum for now. And let's put the base level out to CV1 the snare level out to CV2, the closed hi-hat out to CV3, and the open hi-hat hi level out to CV4. Now remember, these are 0 to 100%, so that makes these unipolar numbers. So we just have to flip these switches to make sure we're getting the numbers that we expect. So now, in our programmer, we select the redrum, and let's select CV1, and let's set that to the level of drum 1, and CV2 to the level of drum 2. Now let's look at the redrum and see what's going on. We've got our levels, 
jumping all over the place. Now 127 sounds pretty hot to me. So let's break, bring these down to about 100, somewhere around 100. And now let's listen to this. Let's solo the snare. Those ghost notes are sounding a little quiet to me, so let's bring those up. That sounds pretty good. That sounds much more natural. We're going to do bring the bottom up of the bass as well. And so while we're here, why don't we do the hi-hat, the closed hi-hat. Let's look at what that level is doing. Sounded pretty good. Okay, so now let's listen to our beat again. Now we haven't done the levels for our open hi-hat. If you look, the probabilities are all pretty much the same except for the end, so it's not really bothering me all that much. I just think the open hi-hat in general is pretty hot. So there we go. There we've got a drum beat, a little groove thing that's never repeating. It doesn't sound like a loop because it's not a loop. Our ear never never hangs on to some piece of the loop that can we can identify it as being a loop. It's changing. In fact, no measure is ever really the same as another measure. So it's nice. Now, let's explain just a few other things about the PDD-2. We've got a pause button, and that just stops the device. Just drops it out. This can be automated. In fact, everything on the PDT-2 can be automated. All the dials and the shuffle and everything else can be automated. So the pause just gives you a way to control when the, uh, when the drums come in and out and what parts are part of it. And then the last thing we haven't talked about is the seed. Now, these are all probabilities that use random numbers to determine when uh, something should be triggered. Now, these random numbers could be different every single time you play the song, but I wanted a little more consistency than that. I wanted the random numbers to be determined uh, just by random probability, but then once I figured out the probabilities that I liked, I wanted them to be the same every single time I play the song, because we are creating music, and I wanted to know what I was committing before I bounced out the track. And so anytime you change one of these dials, the probabilities for the entire song change. But once you have all of your probabilities set and you don't change them, if you play through the song and then you stop and play through the song again, you'll hear the same drum beats. Well, if you've dialed in the exact probabilities that you want, but you just don't like the roll of the dice that you got around the, the random choosing of those probabilities, you change the seed. All the random numbers are based on an initial seed. And so with the same probability dials, but with a different seed, it changes the random numbers. But if you leave all the probabilities the same and you leave the seed the same, then you're going to get the same drum beat each time. For me, when I want to just change a beat, I'll just tweak a dial and it'll change everything. But if I really have all the dials dialed into exactly what I want, then I'll just change the seed until I get to a beat that I like. Okay, that's everything about the PDT2. We've got some patches here, which are just different bass and snare and hi-hat uh, probabilities for a few different types of music, just so you can see how those would be built. But mostly it's experimentation to, uh, to get the beats that you want. 
We've got our pause buttons, which just drop out parts. We've got our linears, uh, which just make sure that no uh, samples play at the same time between one and two. We've got our seeds for probabilities. We've got our independent shuffles. They're independent because uh, sometimes you'll want your hi-hats to be shuffled at a different rate than your bass and snare. So independent shuffles. Then we've got all of our probability dials. On the back we've got our gate triggers and then our levels to control uh, the level if we want, otherwise it's just the probability numbers that might be useful for some other purpose. So that's all there is about the PDD-2. It's a way of creating random drum beats based on probabilities instead of just the normal step sequencer. It sounds, you know, very fresh throughout the whole song. You never feel like you're listening to a loop, but you've tightly controlled what, what uh, the drum beat's actually going to be. So, I hope you have fun. If you have any questions, I'm on the forum a lot. Just post the question there, or my email should be on the uh, Rack Extension page, so feel free to call. Thanks so much.